We're moving on now to, uh, to Isaiah and to chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. And we're reading from verse 1 to 11. And again, we have this, this, uh, this theme coming through the word today that um, as God's people, that we have favour, that we are comforted. And uh, Isaiah starts off, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. And remember, in the past, um, we know that uh, you know the, the Assyrians had, had taken um, Jerusalem off into captivity, and also the Babylonians um, took Jerusalem took Israel off into captivity. And so there is this picture that you know, she's received double for her sins. Poor old Jerusalem, you know. Um, this is the seat uh, of, of the people, really, and the temple um, is in Jerusalem. So therefore, um, this is something that God expects of his people to be responsible. And because of her sins, she has been punished. And we come to a point where there has been a remnant that's been saved all the way through, and then there is this there is this new era that comes in. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. And we have a picture of here this. And obviously that's pointing to um, to John the Baptist, who's coming. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Um, so it gives us a picture of someone coming to uh, Jerusalem, to Israel, but, but actually out in the wilderness. Um, and every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked places shall be made straight and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Um, so we have this picture of, of somebody coming and there is this voice out in the wilderness that's crying, crying out and, uh, and bringing the, the, the mouth of the Lord, bringing a word of the Lord. And of course, in his day, John the Baptist came and as a forerunner of Christ, and he made the way clear for Christ. He preached a baptism of repentance to, uh, to the Jewish nation. And the voice is saying something very important. It says, all flesh is grass, and all its loveliness is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, because the breath of the Lord blows upon it kind of reminds us that our days are numbered, that our days are in the hands of God, that we cannot uh, make plans uh, and thwart God in any way, that God is there, he's the one who breathes life into us in the first place, and he's the one who, when he breathes on us, um, in a sense, you know, we, we start to fade away, and, and we are only here for a season talks about uh, elsewhere in scriptures that we are like a mist that appears for a short while, you know, and then we, we disappear. And so all the things that we achieve on this earth, doesn't matter what we achieve, they're very, very small in, in, in the whole scheme of things as far as God's concerned. We mustn't get too puffed up. We mustn't get too uh, proud of ourselves and what we do and our achievements. And so it's really important that we... Uh, that we, that we are compassionate and merciful to those around us because, you know, we only take out of this world what we give away. We, we are literally on this earth for a while and it's either going to be a better place or a worse place for our, our being here. And so this is something that we have to take stock of in the fact that we are just like, you know, the grass. We, we fade away like flowers. We come and we go. And it's important to, to shine while we're here. It's important to flower while we're here. It's important to, to fulfill the purpose that God has for our lives while we're here. 
because that's the only thing we can do that is going to help us when we stand before him in judgment. What have we done with our life? You know, if we're like a flower that comes into bloom, you know, what have we done with that? You know, as you get older and you have a voice like one crying in the wilderness and you can serve God by speaking out, by bringing God's wisdom, by being a role model for other people to follow, that is your service. That is your blooming. As far as God's concerned, all the other stuff you do before you come to Christ is like filthy rags we heard last week. Well, the whole point is that when you really are coming into bloom, it's coming into bloom for God. You are part of God's creation. Your purpose of being on this planet is to learn life's lesson of you're here to serve God. Okay? And by serving God, your life is a life of abundance. You don't lose your life, you gain your life. You gain the main reason for living. But if you try to live your own life and don't acknowledge the fact that you're here for God's purposes, that you're, you think you're here for yourself, then you lose your life. And your life is waste and uh, a destruction. Your life is just hard work. You can't make sense of life. There's no, there's no reason for life. You know, why am I here? How many people have you heard in the past that have said, you know, why am I here? These are the questions. These are the real questions of life. What is the purpose of my existence? And why am I here? These are the questions that man has tried to answer for many, many, many thousands of years. Outside of, outside of God, they can't. In fact, Solomon said... Um, you know, everything is meaningless. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Nothing makes any sense to us outside of Christ, outside of God. And so we're being reminded of that. And again we're reminded that there is a responsibility on Zion. There is a responsibility for Jerusalem, the place where the temple was, the place where Jesus lived and walked. And Jerusalem says, you who bring good tidings, lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up, don't be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. Well, isn't that what we should be doing today as well ourselves? Shouldn't we be in bold? Shouldn't we be strong? Shouldn't we be lifting up our voices with strength and not being afraid? We serve an almighty God. One plus God is a majority. You know, as David stood before Goliath, you know, he had God on his side. Amen. Goliath just had all his armour and his strength. But, but David had God. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit of a bad match when you think about it, wasn't it? <laughs> and he says, Behold, the Lord God shall come with a strong hand. And his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his work before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. There we come back to the shepherd again. This great shepherd of the sheep. The great shepherd of the flock. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs with his arm and carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. So there is this picture of an almighty God who is all-powerful, who is a very strong, powerful being. And at the same time, as our God, he has compassion, he has mercy. He is someone who has empathy and care and loving, and he just carries, carries us in his bosom and gently leads uh, 